Hello everyone, today's talk is structured in the following way. First, I will go over my survey of traditional fault detection methods, where I will show you what methods could be used for fault delineation and what problems we have with them. Second, I will discuss some recent advancements in machine learning for dealing with fault delineation, as well as state some pain points. I'm sure that everyone understands why faults are important for us, I will not go into detail details about seismic stratigraphy and seismic tectonics. The most straightforward way for geoscientists to identify a fault when interpreting seismic data is to observe a significant displacement in a set of seismic reflectors. Let's take for example caning data set from northwest of Australia. The data set covers a substantial amount of area, almost 5000 square kilometers. That is why it will require from us weeks or even months of interpretation work. There are a variety of conventional attributes that we can use to expedite fault identification. Some are based on the observation that the faults are lateral reflection continuity or discontinuity, like for example semblance, coherence and variance. In general, fault detection consists of two steps. First, collect a set of seismic attributes that highlights faulting. Second, perform fault enhancement, which sharpens the image of faulting while suppressing or removing non-faulting features. And based on my experience of building analytical solutions, starting from 2014, the fundamental problem is that the traditional attributes are sensitive to recorded noise and stratigraphic features that look like reflection discontinuities. For example, salts and channels are also will be included in that attribute. This implies that detecting fault requires more than just measuring discontinuity of seismic reflection. Anyway, a lot of effort was devoted to extend the window vertically, apply smoothing in perpendicular direction to reflection, and countless other changes that did not result in significant improvement but simply increased computational demand. Now let's see how machine learning helps in fault delineation. By the way, the first AI mention for fault detection, at least what I found, was by Christopher that was published in 2005. And they use multilayer perceptron that takes as input windowed attributes and produces the classification if there is a fault or non-fault. There have been countless neural network architecture used in geophysics for fault delineation. Typically, the solution is built around an encoder-decoder unit architecture. Ronenberg introduced the UNet in 2015 for biomedical image segmentation and it's made up of two paths. The contracting path consists of repeated convolutions with ReLU and max pooling operations that reduce spatial information while increasing feature information so that we're getting image as an input and it goes through the layers of this neural network and on the last layer we would have the encoded information of that picture and usual spatial feature and high resolution information. The expanding path reconstruct a fault segmentation so that we had seismic image encoded in the last layer will be reconstructed as a fault segmentation. Even after training on your base data set and validating it on some field data, can we be confident that neural network is general enough to be applied to a wide range of other seismic images without much of a problem? Obviously not. Various complex geological conditions and influence of acquisition equipment lead to a low signal-to-noise ratios of the seismic data, resulting in a large amount of noises in the detection provided by machine learning methods. So, in a sense, the conventional and machine learning methods struggle with the same problem, the noisy fault predictions. That is why training a deep neural network requires a lot of data to get better generalization. Generalization is super important because we would like to get a better fault prediction for a general case and hopefully for any seismic quality or geology. Labeling the faults in 3D seismic data is considerable workload and requires expert knowledge, aside from the pure time-spending nature of labeling that might take several weeks to accomplish. There is one more problem with 3D labeling that I would like to touch on right now that makes it easy to divert machine learning methods from the solution. 
It is a problem that is difficult for humans to observe fault planes. When labeling most of the time, we can only label fault lines correctly. We can observe fault lines when the section is perpendicular to the fault. In such a case, there is no problem with the labeling. But when a section that we are looking at is parallel to a fault, then faults are often displayed in the form of planes. For human eye, it's difficult to find fault planes in such a section without the help of three-dimensional information. However, when we do 3D seismic labeling, we have to label faults that are both parallel and perpendicular to the section, which adds another level of ambiguity to the labeling process. To summarize today's talk, we have a few problems with fault identification based on machine learning methods. The first is that we require a lot of data to get better generalization. And the second is that 3D network requires 3D labeling to accomplish training, but it takes a lot of time to accomplish that manually. And the third one is that the fault planes are hard to distinguish for human eye, and that is why we might include a lot of false positive labeling that might hinder the performance of the neural network. And if you would like to learn how to build your own neural network for fault identification, then I have very good video for you, where I describe open source solution and show how to use that with your own seismic data. Thank you for watching, see you at the next one.